Hello guys. I hope you all are doing well and today's video is gonna be about the biographical drama film, 12 Years a Slave. Let's get right into the video. The film opens with a gathering of slaves getting guidance on cutting sugar stick. A man sits sluggishly on a cart of the crude stick route, inactively checking out at the work of the men. The scene movements to a gathering of shacks. The slaves are eating. Solomon Northup sees the dim juice of blackberries and is roused to make ink and a plume. Sadly, the plan comes up short. The juice is excessively slim. Afterward, in the jam-packed slave quarters, a female mixes in her rest and advances on Northup physically. Solomon streaks back to more joyful times with his significant other and kids. We consider pieces of Solomon's life to be a liberated person. Soon thereafter, he experiences a companion who acquaints him with two voyagers, Brown and Hamilton, professing to work with a bizarre-like show. He consents to go along with them. We next see the threesome at a cafe in D.C. His supporters plunk down a pack of coins in overabundance of their guaranteed total. They share wine and one of them observes intently as Solomon depletes his glass. Everybody is living it up. Out of nowhere, Solomon rises in a wet cell, tied to the floor. In a progression of flashbacks, we see his companions convey him up to his lodging, pardoning his tipsy days to different supporters. Earthy Colored urges Hamilton that time is short and they should be finished with it. Their takeoff closes the flashback and we rejoin Solomon in the cell where he is informed that he is an out-of-control Georgia slave. In spite of his fights of being a liberated person, he has no papers. Solomon is hard-heartedly thumped and at last sent into a slave pen with others. He examines what is happening with Clemens, a clearly taught slave who informs him on the critical nature regarding what is happening. Under front of dimness, they are pulled from their cell, binded and moved to a waterway boat. They are directed to the hold, packed with other human freight. He is shipped to New Orleans with other captives, who tell him he must adapt if he wants to survive in the South. Slave trader Theophilus Freeman gives Northup the identity of Platt, a runaway slave from Georgia, and sells him to plantation owner William Ford. Ford takes a liking to Northup and gives him a violin. Tension between Northup and plantation carpenter John Tybeats breaks when Northup defends himself from Tybeats and beats him with his own whip. Tybeats and his men prepare to lynch Northup but are stopped by the overseer. Northup is left on tiptoes with the noose around his neck for hours before Ford arrives and cuts him down. Northup attempts to explain his situation, but Ford sells him to Edwin Epps. Epps is ruthless and sadistic. Northup meets Pat C., favored slave and Epps' top cotton picker. Epps regularly rapes Patsy and his jealous wife abuses her. Cotton worms destroy Epps' crops, so he leases his slaves to neighbor Judge Turner's plantation for the season. Turner favors Northup and allows him to play fiddle at a celebration and keep his earnings. Northup returns to Epps and pays White Field Hand and former overseer Armsby to mail a letter to his friends in New York. Armsby takes Northup's money but betrays him. Epps questions Northup at knife point but Northup convinces him Armsby is lying. Northup burns the letter. Patsy is caught by Epps going to a neighboring plantation to acquire soap, as Mrs. Epps will not let her have any. Epps orders Northup to whip Patsy, which he does, but Epps demands he strike her harder eventually taking the whip and whipping Patsy nearly to death. Enraged, Northup destroys his violin. 
Northup begins constructing a gazebo with Canadian laborer Samuel Bass. Bass, citing his Christian faith, expresses opposition to slavery and castigates Epps, earning their enmity. Northup reveals his kidnapping to Bass and asks his help in sending his letter. Bass is hesitant because of the risk, but agrees. The local sheriff arrives and Northup recognizes his companion as Mr. Parker, a shopkeeper he knew in New York. As they embrace, Epps furiously protests and tries to prevent Northup from leaving but is rebuffed. Northup bids farewell to Patsy and rides off to his freedom. Northup returns to reconnect with his wife, their fully grown son, daughter, and his daughter's husband. He is presented with his grandson and namesake, Solomon Northup Staunton. He apologizes for his long absence while his family comforts him. The epilogue titles recount Northup's unsuccessful lawsuits against Brown, Hamilton, and Birch. The 1853 publication of Northup's slave narrative memoir, Twelve Years a Slave, his role in the abolitionist movement, and the absence of information regarding his death and burial.